Time to take your video cameras out. MediaCorp's The Pinwheels Award is back for the second year. It wants to recognize the best of online content creators and is calling for submissions this month. Well, the awards hopes to encourage more local content such as this. It puts the spotlight on dementia through the eyes of an elderly Singaporean couple who have been married for 52 years. The video clinched best micro documentary in the non-fiction video category at last year's ceremony. And Chiao, when she joins us here tonight, she's also here with uh, Diogo Martins. He's lead at Bloomer.sg. That's MediaCorp's content creator network. Okay, Wenchi, it's good to see you uh, this evening and thanks for coming in. This film, uh, it's one that many can relate to. Can you tell us something uh, about, uh, you know, the actual piece of work? So basically, I think we saw um, that, we saw online that um, he was actually closing down his hawker store um, to take care of his wife who had dementia. And uh, we actually featured him on one of our videos, maybe two years before that. Yeah, and we were featuring him making traditional desserts at Chinatown. So um, when we saw the article, we were quite surprised. And we thought, you know, maybe it would be nice for us to kind of follow up on the story and find out a little bit more. Yeah. So, so essentially, uh, Winty, uh, this six minute, 39 second micro documentary, uh, a couple, uh, the man, as you mentioned, used to make uh, desserts with his wife in Chinatown. At a he said they worked together yes. and she never complained despite yes. years of very hard work. And then she had dementia and because of that, he was forced to quit to look after her. Yeah. So this video is like a day in their life. And yeah. the format of it, uh, a young lady appeared to ask a few questions, but largely it was told through them both speaking, yes, both exactly. the wife and the husband, no voice over, no. Uh, no information, just them talking about what it means to be in this current situation. Uh, you, are, you did not directly produce this, did you? Yes, yeah. So I was on the team. So I actually was the one who saw the article and I told my colleague, because, you know, we work on things together. So my colleague um, was the one who went down and uh, it was actually uh, really interesting on her end as well because when she went down, um, she actually didn't manage to um, reach him because he had already closed down his shop. Mm -hmm. um, but we knew that he actually, uh, his brother also runs a hawker stall there. So then we went to the brother's hawker stall and kind of asked him uh, for contact to reach out to his brother. And yeah, we waited for him at the hawker stall and eventually he came down. So that was kind of how we got in touch with him again. And that was like quite nice because we haven't seen him for like two years. Yeah. yeah to produce this kind of content, you have to keep your eyes and ears open, uh, be ready to sort of uh, kind of find the stories where they are. And it's, it's, it's like a a hunt as well, isn't it? You know, sort of searching, joining the dots. Uh, Diogo, you know, content, it is something that uh, we consume every day. We're producing it every day at one level or another. I mean, anyone who has a handphone uh, these days thinks they're a content creator. It takes a lot more than that, doesn't it? Fortunately and unfortunately, yes. Uh, a lot of experience in the productions that you do, like finding the contacts, finding the people, finding the story. Sometimes you can be lucky and find those stories and shoot something. But with experience, with knowledge, with study, you can become a better and better content creator and just produce amazing content like OGS does and a lot of the prized content creators for the pinwheels. Is there a trick to be able to sort of, uh, or, or, you know, sort of home in on, on the right ideas or, or a hook of some sort? I think persistence is one of the, the main characteristics of anyone that is trying to become a content creator. A lot of people give up very quickly when they start, when they don't see impact in what they're doing. So it's that day-to-day -day operation that needs to make them look for the story, look for the creativity, look for something different. Oh, they've yeah. got to be relentless. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, would an award like the Pinwheels Award uh, help you? I mean, say you win this award. What does it get you? Does it get your contract? Does it get you more funding to do better productions? What does it actually get you? So last year as this year, it can get you production grants. Uh, it can also get you a agreement with MediaCorp to produce future content, which was something that we prized a lot of the, the awardees last year. If you're already a Bloomer content creator like OGS, it's not a necessity, but it's also a highlight of the great content that our creators are making. But you get the notoriety, you get the exposure that MediaCorp gives you, and that might get you even more projects in the future as well. 
Right. I, mean, I imagine that some of the best content creators are known already, right? So you might expect, you know, familiar names to, to turn up uh, for these awards. I mean, if, if you're not known, I mean, you know, I mean, social media is so uh, accessible. We kind of uh, see these characters. So do they really need any advice? I mean... I think um, it really starts from interest and curiosity. Uh, that's how I, I, mean, I started. And I feel like, you know, we all start somewhere. And like you mentioned, social media is really accessible. So anyone with like a phone and a camera can really just put out something, you know. But of course, to take it to the next level, you need to kind of like uh, Diogo mentioned, be more persistent and kind of uh, try to improve your skills and do something different that someone else is not doing. Yeah, so I think um, the advice is really just to be interested and curious. Yeah. We, we try to look for a range of content creators and content. Like we're not just prizing the best content creators in the country or the biggest. Try to look for the content that is actually valuable. We gave an award to a content creator that is literally just on his day to day. He has a hobby that he goes fishing and it was one of his trips on a fishing trip in Singapore oh, that made it as right, an awardee. Right. Right? Yeah. We're trying to look for the, those specific pieces of great local stories that can be told for yes. the awards. I mean, I mean, on Facebook, there's this wonderful site uh, on cloud spotting, as an example, a group of people who just love to take pictures of the sky and, yeah. and what the sky is doing. Uh, it doesn't have a very big following, but it has a great potential, I'd say. You know, no, for example, this prize you mentioned <laughs> for this, this chat going out fishing, getting a prize for that. What are you actually rewarding in this? Was he able to capture this in a technically sophisticated way? Was the idea unusual? Was the approach unusual? What were you rewarding for by giving him a prize? I think it was all of it. So the creativity in what he was showing, the way that he was shooting his content, the cinematography was great, sound quality was fantastic, the story that he was telling on how his hobby worked, what he was learning out of it, his patience and concentration that he would get while he was shooting and looking for the fish, right? And it's educational at the same time because you don't see it every day here in Singapore. Right. Well, all the best with uh, the selection process and with the awards. Uh, we've been speaking there to Chia Wenqi, winner of last year's Best Micro Documentary, as well as Diogo Martins, lead at MediaCorp's Bloomer.sg.